Okay, I think we have most of the interesting for in the room for VM tests. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, let's get started. Uh, next, uh, Daniel will talk about the VM tests. Hello. Uh, so this is about VM tests. Um, it's testing, uh, running tests inside a virtual machine, not testing virtual machines. Uh, so this is the motivation, but before I actually begin, I just want to make a note that uh, none of the ideas here are really that new. I, in fact, I just stole most of the ideas. Um, I just looked at all the other projects around, and I took all the ideas I liked, and I combined them. And, and in particular, I even stole the name. But everyone was doing that already, so I, I don't feel too bad about that. Uh, but uh, yeah, so the motivation. Um, so the reason I started this project was that, um, you know, there's a few reasons. One, like, tests are good. It's pretty hard to maintain uh, complex software without good automated testing. Uh, otherwise, you're just thinking really hard when you're looking at code, and I'm not very good at that. Um, VPF is also a really fast-moving target. I do a lot of VPF-related development. Um, and so if you have like a non-trivial application, uh, you have a lot of feature gates and fallback code. And especially in like the new Kfunk world, um, there's no like UAPI guarantees, so it's, it would be good to like test your code against a bunch of different kernels to validate your assumptions. Uh, but that being said, this is a pretty ge uh, generic problem. It's not really limited to the BPF world, so um, the solution is hopefully applicable across a variety of domains. Um, but more on BPF. So BPF Prog Run, I think, is actually really powerful. It's one of the really cool things that um, BPF-powered applications can do. Um, essentially, you can run a program in freestanding mode. You provide the input context, and you collect the return value. You don't need to attach it to anything. Um, but it's inherently dependent on the kernel you run on, because it still runs in the kernel. It doesn't run in user space. So you have to wrangle the right kernel. Uh, the last point is that VM-based testing is actually pretty popular. A lot of um, bigger, well, more resourced projects have support for that. But it's like, it's all very bespoke stuff, very sometimes kind of hacky and definitely not reusable. You can't pull it off the shelf. So the main thing I wanted to do was I want to create a solution that you could pull off the shelf and it's really easy to use. And in fact, I want to make it so it's silly not to use it. Um, so the goal is in order of uh, kind of importance. The first is reusable infrastructure. I want people to be able to pull it off the shelf whenever they need. Uh, they can instinctively reach for it. Uh, the second, I want to make it run inside CI. That's really important because I don't, it, it's much easier to tell contributors, hey, just make the, the CI test pass versus, hey, run these 10 steps on your machine and do it the way I do it, and hopefully that works. And the final goal is uh, just to make it simple, easy to use. I don't really think this problem space is that complicated, so I, I think you can hide it behind a fairly simple interface. That's about all the talking points I had. The rest of this presentation is mostly just demos. I just, it's easier to explain if I just show a demo. Uh, there's two demos I'm going to do. One is as a development tool, so you can use VM test the binary as part of, for example, you know, iterating, iterating on kernel changes. You can just run it, run some tests really quick. The second is a VM test action, which is a GitHub actions wrapper. Um, I think that's just actually just called the GitHub action in the singular form, um, and you can, it demonstrates how to drop it into your existing workflows really easily. Um, oh, and also note that there's two parts to this thing, right? VM test is the binary, it contains all the or QEMU or orchestration logic um, and some terminal interface things, and the second thing is just a little bit of JavaScript that installs all the dependencies and configures VM test to work in GitHub. So uh, yeah, consider this config file. It's vmtest.toml, just toml format. Um, this is the local development example. There's two targets. Essentially what we're trying to do is we're checking that the kernel version is what we expect. The first one checks if the running kernel is 6.2. The last one checks if it's 6.1. Notice how we're running the same 6.2 kernel for both, so only one of these will pass. I put a GIF in a PDF. It doesn't work, so I also put a link. Yeah, so pretty much, um, yeah, you type VM test and looks in the current directory for the config file, and then it'll start running things. Uh, I actually went through a great deal of trouble to make this interface dynamic. Uh, it also does the correct thing if it's, you know, 
you, if you're not attached to a terminal, so it just prints it out straight to a log file and it works as you expect. It does some nifty things, like it'll collapse output if a step succeeds, but if a step fails, it'll leave it expanded so it's a little easier to debug, just a UX thing. The first time I did this, I actually didn't make it like streaming output, but it, you get really antsy if there's no progress on the screen, and despite it taking the same amount of time, uh, runtime, it feels much faster this way. Fancy, huh? Um, the second example is the CI example. Uh, so I created like a demo application. It's really simple. This is main.cpp. Uh, pretty much it dynamically links against JSON CPP. Uh, it runs uname and it prints out the kernel version uh, in a JSON object. For such a binary, you might have a CI config like this. If you're not familiar with GitHub Actions, this is really just three steps. The first step is you install some uh, build time dependencies and maybe some runtime dependencies as well. Second step is you build, uh, you build your binary, configure slash make, and then the third one is you run your test runner. So now consider, because your binary depends on the kernel version, you want to say support everything 6.0 plus and you want to have a matrix of jobs that test that. So this is how you would use VM tests to drop into your uh, CI workflow. So the first part of the diff is um, you have a matrix strat testing strategy. This tells GitHub to spawn three parallel jobs that will you know, run 6.0, 6.1, 6.2. The URL is just a link to some dummy asset uh, where I, or dummy release where I host a bunch of test assets. In this case, it's just a very st it's a standard BZ image. The bottom part of the diff is how you drop it in. So you replace the test runner thing uh, with the kernel and the command, and it just works. Um, and so note that the dependency installation and the build steps happen outside the VM, and you want that because it's probably faster than being in the VM. And the final step, uh, we run as little as we can inside the VM, and we just only run the pre-built binary. And so this is a good example because it does dynamic linking, this binary. So it proves that the, uh, the host user space is the same as the guest user space. And we do that through clever use of a 9p file system. So we mount the root, uh, the host rootfs as the guest rootfs. This is what it looks like, the output for the 6.2 job at the very end. You can sort of see it prints 6.2. Um, if you don't believe me, I have a link to the job, and I can show off some of the other things. So yeah, here's the 6.2, uh, and then we do the run, and notice how the output is not collapsed. It's just all there, and you're booting your kernel, and at the very end, runs the command, and there it is. So the implementation, yeah, there's really no new ideas here. You can squint at this later if you want. But if there was one novel thing I did, it was uh, I used the programmable interfaces for QEMU and uh, QEMU guest agent. Uh, so a lot of the existing things, they kind of just shell out, and they have like triply escaped commands that they shell out with, which, is, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I get really nervous when I try to extend that kind of stuff, because you can't really rely on the type system or programming uh, interfaces. Uh, QEMU guest agent actually is really neat. I don't know if anyone's tried that yet for at least this use case. But it's a, it's a very clean out-of-band mechanism to uh, do things inside the guest. So you don't have to bring up networking or SSH or Wrangle SSH keys. Uh, pretty much it's just a binary that runs inside the guest VM. It listens on this vertio serial so, uh, port. And they have some kind of RPC communication that's statically uh, typed. Uh, so yeah, future stuff. Uh, the core functionality is mostly there for the use cases I have in mind and the projects I'm going to add this to. Uh, but if there's other feature requests, we can discuss that and I can add more stuff. Uh, one limitation right now is that uh, the GitHub Action Wrapper builds VM tests from source. Uh, that's because it's not packaged anywhere. Um, so a binary distribution would be good because it would cut down the CI time and short CI times are good. There's a lot of ways to do that in the Rust ecosystem, so I'll just do it at some point. I was chatting with some people yesterday. Uh, one-liner interface would be nice, so if you could do like really quickly just run things under different kernels uh, with a couple words, that'd be neat. Uh, tying into that idea, if you build a registry of 
So yeah, maybe we could build a registry of distro like kernels. It's actually not that hard. I have these scripts that use Docker to uh, repeatably do kernel builds, which is different than reproducibly, which is much harder. Um, so you pretty much you take a distro k config, you flip the configs that VM test needs. Pretty much you need to build 9pfs in as equals yes. That's the only thing you really need. Um, you can have a registry and can upload it to the LB. The, uh, yeah, the, the, the fake asset. This is an idea I stole from Omar. It's a very neat idea. It's a way to get around paying for Amazon S3. Uh, you can just use GitHub to host binaries. Uh, but yeah, if anyone needs stuff, you can open a ticket, email me, discuss it. But I think it's pretty useful, and it's a really easy way to just do uh, VM testing in your projects. So, um, thanks. That's really cool. Uh, the, uh, it was really impressive, like how fast the the test was in in the GIF, or or GIF. I don't know. Um, so w we have some infrastructure for this in Cilium. Uh, it's called Little VM Helper. Um, I would be surprised if you heard of it. Um, we we do something similar. So we use it to test Cilium. Tetragon and Packet, where are you? Um, and the basic idea is that we have a program that looks a bit like this, but it also can build root images, and it can also be used to build kernels. Um, so we need to build root images because for some of them, we need to have kind inside so that we can do like Kubernetes tests. And for others, we just need to do like something, I don't know, like run a bunch of code tests. Um, and there's another repository that has um, a configuration of how to build these images. And what it does is basically whenever you do a PR on it, there's a GitHub action that will compile the kernel, build the root images, and push them into OCI repositories. So we already have like, I don't know, five or six kernels that we test against in these repositories. Um, and also root images that one could use. Um, again, like our use cases are kind and no kind. Um, but yeah, this looks really cool. Um, I just wanted to, because th th there seems to be like a big overlap. So if you feel like something of for the from little VM helper would be useful, it would be great to like bring the two together. Is, is that, so the thing you're describing, it builds images, um, but it's not doing like the testing stuff, right? Because I think the Cilium stuff uses vertme, like a wrap around vertme, right? So Cilium slash CBPF use vertme. Um, Cilium uses um, this thing, uh, little VM helper. So in addition to build images, you can do LVH run, uh, which is basically like VM test here. So like, uh, but like this is, I, I'm pretty sure like it's pretty similar to what you do. What you do is probably better because better because it's much faster. Yeah, well, one other thing I, I think I forgot to mention was because all the programmable interface stuff is there, I, it's actually really solid foundations in my opinion. You can, I feel pretty confident adding a lot more stuff. It's not very hacky, at least in my opinion. Cornelius just said that putting things into container images work well, right? <laughs> um, so I, 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 I wrote the, the vertme integration that we use for the eBPF library, and I think VM test for me is attractive because, or why, like vertme is essentially like a precursor to this, like less featureful, I would say. Um, why this is, is nice is like this idea of having the 9PFS, kind of the, the host file system mounted into that VM is for me really powerful because it means that I can very easily test stuff that I have cooking on my local machine without kind of having going to go through like I, I build an image and all this other stuff. And uh, I actually went and created some issues this morning for you. <laughs> um, I think one, one thing that would be really interesting and where, where I think this uh, idea of having uh, the, the host file system mounted is really powerful is we could add a flag to VM test that actually starts the GDB server in Quimu. 
Um, and basically, then the only thing you have to do is like you, you do VM test this thing, and you can then connect to. You can uh, you can then connect to kind of the the kernel that's running your whatever your test is really easily and kind of have all the tools at your disposal uh, inside of that VM. It should be cool. This also supports VM images. I didn't show any of that off, but it it can boot up like a QCAT two image. And it also does the mounting stuff with 9P. So 9P is read only, um, and I would like to use this for like ButterFS progs, which is going to have to write at something. Um, is it? Yeah. So it like it creates images and like corrupts them, and then runs FS check against it to make sure that it does the thing. So like I could probably make it run in tempfs inside the VM, but like I, I would like to have the option of like I I've used vert me for like my quick tests and that lets me add disks. So like, I don't know if you want to deal with all that bullshit, but that would be useful for me, my use case. Okay, yeah, I need to look into that. I thought 9P was read writable. I, I don't know. I thought it's, well, maybe then the, it's just the way I use it. It's always read only, so I could just be dumb. Oh, you can read write? Um, I'm yeah, just dumb. So. I, I think like um, in some of the VM test other project, VM test projects, they mounted the 9P root of S's RO, the Command line. Yeah, KDevOps yeah. wants it read only, and I've only ever used it read only. Uh, so I'm just I'm an idiot. If it's read write, then we're good. Yeah, I think it has to be right if it was used for the Plan Nine OS stuff. Yeah, I, d I don't like I, again. I've only ever seen it as like give me access to like my Git tree or whatever, and like yeah. But yeah, you can add more disks. Um, it already wrangles stuff like that, and there's internal s scaffolding for it. Cool, yeah, thank you everyone.